What is up? What is good, folks? Happy day one of this Urban Ain't Dead reading blog. Y'all know what time it is. It's time to get on that urban hood street shit. This entire blog is dedicated to the one and only Urban Ain't Dead publications. We will be reading two new releases from two new authors on a set. Many Black with Good Girls Going Rogue and Key Reese Ashley with State's Witness. Um, I am so excited for this reading vlog. It is officially day one. Today is release day for State's Witness and your girl is here for it. Happy release day, Queen Key. Welcome to the royalty table to you both. Quick synopsis, and then I'm going to tell you what I've read so far. So, Good Girls Gone Rogue is about Shannon and her girl, Cynthia. Shannon is a good girl, very smart, on her shit. Cynthia, her best friend, not so much. Of course, comes to, of course, who comes to little dudes trying to fuck up their lives, which gives our good girls, Shannon, our smarty, the idea to flip some shit, get some money off of it which drags her down the rabbit hole of the drug world. Now, I've started that. I'm not too far into it, but I've started it. And I must say, I love the writing. I'm in love with Shannon. She's very smart. Um, That prologue, though, I can tell it was foreshadowing. And I cannot wait. But so far, so good. Up next, we have state's witness which i'm a little further in by kiris ashley and that is about a young woman named nakia who at 18 grabbed up her little brother their things and got ghost years later she is now a mother of two baby's father is deceased and she still got her brother she's working at a hotel until one day she's she sees some things, some unsavory things, some stay witness type shit. And it goes down from there. So, that was the synopsis. So far, I'm getting different vibes than what I was getting from the synopsis. And so far, we have met Russell, who is IPIMP. I'm guessing he is the one that is basically trash in the hotel. That brings all the action and the problems out in the highest way. And we have met Nakaya. Um, seems like a regular, strong black woman doing what she has to do to get things done. Um, I'm also enjoying the writing on this. Again, I'm a bit further, maybe like 20-25%. And I'm enjoying the different POVs. So far, we have gotten two different POVs on our boy, our main dude, Russell. We have his POV of himself, and we have the POV of the women outside of his group. Um, and I really enjoyed the comparison of that, which shows a lot in the writing. I will, I'm really enjoying it. So far, we have, we're really just meeting Russell and his harem of women. Uh, not too much of Nakaya Nik- yet, but I am really here for it. Both of these, bang- Both of these new releases seem like five stars to me. So, I will get back to you sometime today and let you know what it is. What is up? What is good, fam? Welcome back to day two of this Urban Idea Reading Blog. And I got some notes. Now, starting with State's Witness, I want to say, first and foremost, I want to pimp, I want to zone in on that writing because it is amazing. Uh, there are a few editing issues. The writing is great. It is very visual. You know, your girl's a visual reader. I have to see what is being uh, said in front of me in these books, and I definitely see what Kiri actually was doing with this one. I just really hope that this is going somewhere. I hope this has a not doesn't even have to end. It could be a cliffhanger, but I really hope that this is rounding itself out to end with an ending of some sort. And real quick, before I go into Good Girls Gone Rogue, the nigga Russell is going to die. And that bitch Chiana going to do it. 
prediction done. Now, good girls, good girls going to rogue, shaman sin by I mean black. Let's discuss. Now I'm reading the both of these at the same time, and not to compare, but you can definitely you can definitely tell that this was written by a man. As I said, it, the the writing is more flowery and more detailed. I am really enjoying the writing though, even though there may be some you know unnecessary descriptive writing in it i don't mind it i'm really enjoying what the story is going so far i'm really liking our main characters i see where they're both are coming from sham is my favorite sin i just want to give sis a hug they did use the time jump thing up in here you know i don't like it but it was used very well if you're looking for a time jump that not well this will do it for you yeah this has been like five star what's up i'm back about to end off day two and shut it all down but real quick i wanted to come to you all with a quick update of first good girls gone rogue by the king of many black so i'm about 45 percent way through almost halfway percent almost halfway through this book and i must say i'm sensing a bit of hateration between my two friends sin and shan like what is going on like if there's some jealousy I wasn't aware of before, like, clue me in. Also, Sham is asking for trouble many ways. She's allowing this here alter ego to push her morals and her, and her, what she will and what she won't do. And speaking of haters, speaking of jealousy, is that what's going on with the sister, the Chandra chick, the older sister of Shannon? Because something is, I'm sensing something going on. Like, do you want her man? Are you trying to protect her on some little sis, big sis type thing? Like, what is going on with that? Um, so it's really not looking too hot for these two. They are really going down a path that they're not very smart. They're, I thought they were smarter than what they're turning out to be. Let's say that. I am liking the way that their minds are working, especially Shannon's with the math and the, you know, mathematics and the calculations that she's doing with the money. But I need them to be smarter than that. Do I have anything else to say about good girls going around? No. But I'm sensing new prediction time. I'm sensing that it's all going to fall apart pretty soon because they fucking up and they're not doing right. So, that is my update and my prediction for Good Girls Gone Rogue by Mamie Black. Now, on to State Witness by Kiris Ashley. I'm now feeling maybe four store vibes, maybe three and a half. I'm going to say I'm a little over um, State Witness by Kiris Ashley. And I'm wondering, was Nakaya even needed to tell the story because it, to me it doesn't seem like she's our focus even though she was the main focus of the synopsis as well as everything I've heard about this book I also counting against it knocking it down to maybe a four star three and a half I'm wondering how these two stories are going to connect Beyond the fact that she's the one that called the Homeland Security. I'm sure something's going to happen, but I'm over 50% of the way through this book and there's no connection. I'm seeing nothing but the mundane from Nakaya and Russell. Their two stories are not diverging properly for me. I'm wondering what's going on. I'm really hoping this is really going somewhere. If not, I will let y'all know, and I'll talk to you all in the morning on day three. Deuces. I'm connected. What's up, folks? Happy day three of this Upper Ain't Dead reading blog. Um, I am finishing up with State Witness, and I am about 60% of the way through Good Girls Going to Rogue by Manny Black. Starting with State Witness, I have more notes for that. Now, I'm going to stand by the fact that I'm feeling the Kaya was needed whatsoever. 
There is still no connection. I'm about damn near 70% of the way through this book. And furthermore, this relationship with Nakaya is for what and for why. Now, unless he's the one that's right under her nose, this is meaningless. Also, if he is the one right under her nose, why the hell was he introduced 50% of the way through the book? Four Swords 3 and Half Star Vibes. I will let y'all know how the ending hits, but I don't see it happening. Again, the writing is great, though. Moving on to Good Girls Golden Road. Shit is really hitting the fan. I'm just dealing in weed no more. We're doing other shit that can get us pops and locks, okay? I am really putting a lot on this ending as well because it could be a very real life four star or it could be a five star. So I'm not seeing any real issues with this besides the editing issues and the a good ending. That ending can bring it to a four star, can bring it up to a five star. I'll let y'all know soon. All right, real quick, before I shut down the end of, before I shut down day two of this Urban Idea Reading vlog, I have finished Day Witness 3.75 stars. And only because it took over half the book to really get into the story. Not just, not just half the book, but then, like, then about 80% of the book. The romance was put in there for a plot device, and the Kai was put in there for a plot device. To get us where we needed to go to get to the 70%, Nikai wasn't even needed. And this romance is just to bring her into the story? No, I need more. The writing was beautiful. If you are looking for a slow paced end of the book, semi boom bombshell, this may be for you. The writing is gorgeous, slight editing issues. Um, so I'm giving it 3.75 stars. Good girl's going rogue. She is going down. We have our hands on that white stuff. Um, I actually feel like this janitor dude, he's scary as shit. Something's going to go down with him. And it's not looking too hot for neither one of our girls, Sham or Sin. I feel like somebody, prediction time, I feel like somebody's going to go. Good morning, folks. Now, I know y'all may not be able to tell the difference. I want to get up close personal on these lashes. That needs to be done today, but that's neither here nor there. Um, this is about a week and some um, from the last clip. And I have officially, officially finished, um, damn, Girl Girls Gone Rogue by the author Manny Black. And I have thoughts, and I'm giving this four fucking stars. I am so happy I have a new author to look out for. Um, but before I go completely into my thoughts on Good Girls Gone Rogue by the King Manny Black, I want to sing <laughs> to Tilia Tiana, another new author. Yes. A another new queen that has decided to go out with the big boys. Happy release day, queen, to you and to Urban Ain't Dead. I am about to get into writing for you. Release day today, January 20th, 2003. And I'm going to hopefully finish that up. If I'm not mistaken, it's about 167 pages. I'm going to finish that up today because this video is going to be late because I wanted it up Sunday, which is coming up. But I'm going to have to read this and edit it and upload it. So it might be a little late. But it is definitely worth it for Tilia, Tiana, and writing for you. But back to Good Girls Gone Rogue. Now, my predictions were this Mr. Baker... The janitor person was going to be problems. He did not come back. Also, Cynthia, you're going to have problems. And not really. And I can understand why. Because, spoiler alert, this ends off with a to be continued. So there will be a next book after this. So I'm guessing we'll keep Cynthia around for a little bit. Um, Let's talk about the tragedy that occurred. 
though I feel as though it was the right decision, since we still need Cynthia for the next book, and then Buwan got his own shit going on. Plus, Sham is with Buwan, and she's like our main character. But, spoiler, Deshaun is murdered. Did it get that impact that I wanted it to have? No. Because this is what really brought my star level down. A death is to be meaningful, is to have a reason, is to push forward the story in some meaningful way. Deshaun's death. Nobody knew what happened. I didn't know what happened. I know he got shot before, but I don't understand, like, what the fuck happened. Y'all are drug dealers, and you got shot up over some Popeyes. Um... The story was great. The writing was wonderful. It was a little too flowery. It had a lot of extra description, but it did its job. I really enjoyed the slang and the terms from the 80s that were used in this book. The characters. There's a lot of character development. Is it the way that we're supposed to go? No, these bitches have gone rogue. Sham is asking for trouble. Cynthia, I still think that bitch gonna die. She gonna die, catch HIV, get, get started doing drugs. Something's gonna happen. Um, and that's not coming on to get knocked up because that's, you know, that seems inevitable. But I really enjoyed Good Girls Gone Wrong. I honestly did. Um, I will definitely be looking out for anything else. Manny Black, from beginning to end, I was definitely intrigued. Every time I had to go do something with my kids and my fiance or my house, I was very upset because I wanted to keep reading it. I wanted to keep pushing on, but you know, life goes. So yeah, I would definitely recommend Good Girls Gone Rogue by the author Manny Black. Now, on to writing for you. Bye, Celia Tiana. Okay, fam, so I am back with my first update of Riding For You by Talia Tiana. Happy release day, queen. Welcome to the royalty table. Um, And I really want to get it out before the boys wake up. So, real quick synopsis. We have two twin brothers. Close, connected, share everything. Okay? Put this way. Um, yeah, what is that? Okay. They share everything. And then we have little Miss Kinsey, who they've known for years. And they have their own special connection with her. Juice. So, we have one twin, Z Zang, Zayn, who is currently incarcerated, will be getting out shortly from, I believe, a three or five year bid. We got the other twin brother, Zaire, out here running the streets hard. Still fucking around with our good girl, Kenzie. I think I like her, but we're not there yet. And fucking around with her, he ends up trying to make her jealous and proposes to another bitch. Drama. So, Zai, the other twin is finna get out, and our story is finna really begin. Now, I am at chapter three of this thing. And shit is already hot. The writing is good. It is the writing that I like. I believe, though, that all three of these new releases have used the same editor. Urban Name Dead. Publications. Get at your girl. I will be posting, I will be posting my editing and beta reading Uh services on instagram as well as in the community tab if anybody shall need me because i'm seeing the same editing issues with writing for you but we're not even gonna trip off of that because i know what it is now so other than that the writing is great our main female mackenzie bad bitch lover bald as hell lover um now when it comes to the twins, we have not yet met the other twin, but we have met Zaire. And Zaire is the one that proposed to Kristen, who I believe, we're not there yet. That comes to prediction. But 
I'm really liking this for y'all. So four or five star. But he proposed to Kirsten to get Mackenzie jealous because she didn't want to really be too serious with him for whatever reason, which I am believing is because of the brother. But we're not there yet. So he proposed to her and things are going down because he just came out the box with the fiance. Now, who do I believe has the better chance? The brother in jail that we ain't mentioned because Zaire's already fucking up. We know we're inside of his head. He loves her. But is he ready? I can't wait to meet the brother. I feel like the fiance is going to be a major issue unless unless this bitch goes crazy and, you know, offs herself or something and, you know, ends her story. But she's going to be a major issue. I feel like she may be our main antagonist. This is one of the brothers, which I hope not. I'm really hoping. Oh, my God. I am this. I am really hoping. Yeah, thank you, baby. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I'm keeping a sneak peek in there for the folks. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Um, stay tuned from new music coming from Romaine Royal Auntie. But twin one, Zaire's fucking up. Mackenzie is also having her issues, but I don't want to spoil too much. Mainly right now, I'm getting the feeling that the fiance, who just basically got her heart broken by this man that proposed to her just to get back at another woman, is going to be an issue. I cannot wait. Again, five star vibes. Same day, I'm back. Um, I will definitely be finishing. I will definitely be finishing this book today. I am already fifty one percent of the way through. Still a five star read so far. I'm. This is definitely a recommendation for the royalty crew and everybody else. Um, okay. Notes. I'm definitely rooting for Ice. Zaire is slow as fuck. Now, while I do feel bad for Kirsten, cause I know she's in the middle of some shit that she has no control or idea of what's going on. She can't have a swim, period, point blank. Um, I love Miss Ice, aka Zayan, Zane, whatever the fuck. And I'm rooting for him yet again, but at the same time, he knows what's up. I don't understand why he's it's taking him so long to come up with a fucking reason why shit is happening the way it is. Nigga, you too smart. You knew what it was when you first came out of jail. <laughs> Mackenzie. Before I get to the slight issue I'm having right now with, with this story, I'm going to say I love Mackenzie. She's in a bad place right now because of everything that's going on. And she's not making right decisions. Why would you do what you did back then to put yourself in a situation? Don't do that. Why you keep doing shit? Then she's going to take too fucking long. And she's going to miss out on both of them. She going to have nobody. Also, that thing just went down with Mackenzie and this long lost niece and uncle thing. I really hope it's going somewhere because for you to bring it in now seems like a plot device. I'm going to say it though. Plot device. Even though I'm still going to say five stars as of right now and I'm 50% of the way through. I don't know how this book can really go any lower than five stars, 4.75, unless it's a horrible ending. But as of right now, baby, we got a winner. Okay, folks, same day, but your girl has to get out. It is time to redo the beauties. Um, Let me know how y'all feel about this new look I'm trying to pull. Okay, let me know. But I am about 80%. Actually, not about, I am approximately 80% of going through the book. And y'all know I do not come for none of that. I usually just wait to the end of the book and give y'all my final thoughts. But this shit here, I am hoping and praying it does not plummet to a three star. Because I need shit to wrap up nicely. Not wrap up. It don't got to be the end. It could be a continuation or whatever the fuck. So I would love to hear more from these characters. 
butt that we throwing in no bullshit to make no more drama when there's already enough drama in it. Y'all making more bullshit and more drama and bringing in more characters and the shit between the Kenzie and the twins is like being pushed out the way. Like, make it make sense and make this end right. Okay? I'm not gonna spoil shit. I'm just gonna say that and keep my fingers crossed. And this is the before. See you in a minute. And this is the after. What do we think? Um, but I'm also back with not only with the new booze, but I'm also back with my final thoughts on writing for you by the author Talia Tiana. And I must say the end did bring it down for me, but it's only 4.5 stars instead of a five. I'm gonna tell y'all why. So I told y'all there's a lot going on already. And I told y'all that Kirsten could not get a fucking twin. And I told y'all that I was kind of worried for a good girl, Kenzie. So, all of those worries turned out to be very valid. But at the same time, my main issue with that ending is, it's too much going on. Y'all have all of these other conflicts and dramas and issues, and motherfuckers come out the box with some bullshit. So now this is how we end this book off. Not with everything else, but with but with some new shit. And that is the real reason why I cannot give this book five stars. Also, I had high expectations for it because of the way it was going. But I won't hold that against it because those were, those were my expectations, not what the book promised me. But, but with that being said, two... I mean, three new to me authors, two takeaway authors, and three recommendations. I would definitely call this a win. And let's see if I can get this bitch up by Tuesday. That's the real challenge. But thank you all so much for joining me on this Urban Idea Reading Blog. If you ain't heard, Urban Idea is the voices of the trenches. Get in there. This is the real people, real stories, not the fake bullshit from the others that y'all try to that y'all get and say it's representation. No, this is real shit. If you ain't heard about Urban Ain't Dead, get on them. Link is in the bio. Link is in the description box below. And your girl is out. Mwah. This is...